So anyway, so welcome everybody. Um, so today I'm going to uh, talk about a lot of stuff. As you can see, the plan, and you know, I'll go through this real, uh, in a minute, the plan is pretty ambitious. So hopefully we'll go through this uh, and uh, hope, first hope is that we actually cover all this and the second hope that we we'll cover it in a way that actually people can get something out of it and not like too quickly. Um, but before I even start going through the plan and kind of sketching out what is the, you know, kind of the idea of the talk, let me tell you, like explaining uh, even the title. So unequal three theories is kind of understandable, even though I have uh, even something more to say about it. But why is it that any of three theories are connected with this idea of disconnected gauge groups? And by the way, disconnected gauge group is just a fancy way to say that we are going to be talking about theories which have discrete uh, gauge groups. So they have a, a continuous component, a simple Lie groups type standard gauge group, and an extra discrete factor that we're going to gauge. That's what we mean by disconnected gauge groups. Right? So why is it that um, these two things are connected? And the reason being is that, as I will explain to you through the talk, in these two recent papers, the first n equal 3 theory had been constructed, and some of those had been constructed using this idea of gauging, discreetly gauging uh, groups, starting from n equal 4 theory and discreetly gauging a discrete subgroup and going to n equal 3. Again, I'm going through this uh, very quickly right now, and I'll get back to it. And so me and Philip and I, we were thinking about uh, discrete gauging in n equal 2. And the reason why we connected these two is because this process of going from n equal 4 to n equal 3 by discrete gauging was what inspired us and made us understand, we, under, we think the full kind of like set of rules for discrete gauging in n equal 2. Okay? So that's the idea. That's why we start from n equal 3, and then we end up with discussing n equal 2 theories and how to discrete gauge uh, uh, in any quarter. Okay, that's a, the kind of bigger picture. More in detail, so the talk that I'm going to describe is based on these three papers. Actually, it's based on many more papers, but I, don't, I didn't want to write a huge list. These two ones have come up very recently in, in December. And those are the first two papers that discuss any equal three theories. And then hopefully there is a, you know, we're always hopeful and optimistic that we're going to put this paper out in April, <laughs> knowing uh, us probably will be June or July or something, but well, uh, we should be optimistic. Okay? Um, so, so what I'm going to talk today more concretely is the following. So I will start kind of introducing the general picture of n equal 3 theories. I'm sure very few of you have actually thought about n equal 3 theories. In fact, the most, you know, the first n equal 3 theories have been constructed, uh, constructed three or four months ago. And so I want to tell you why is it the case, right? You mean that you have n equal 1, n equal 2, n equal 4, there's 3 in the middle. Why haven't we considered that? So I will hopefully address that in the first part. Then I will go back or change a little bit topic and refresh sabe Whitman theory. Because one of the theme of this, of this talk is that we're going to go back and forth from n equal 3 to n equal 2, then up to n equal 4, we are going to move through through different uh, SUSE content, and especially we're going to be settled. We're going to be using a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of arguments from n equal two to discuss n equal three theory. Okay, so I want to remind you that. And then you know we'll go down. I'll show you the new n equal three theories that are being constructed here, and then more carefully debate in explaining this idea of discrete gauging, and finally hopefully concluding by telling you the rules how to use the intuition that was allowed, outlined to go from n equal 4 to n equal 3 to discrete gauging in generic uh, n equal 2 years. Okay? So that's the, idea, that's the plan. Um, I will try to avoid as much as possible details and, te and technicalities, uh, but please stop me at any, at any time. Okay? Really. It's better not to go through all this, but get something out of it than just uh, let me talking to myself. Okay? So, <laughs> Before we start, um, let me kind of like uh, restate again this idea that we're going back and forth between n equal 4, n equal 3, n equal 2, and stuff like that. So in order to get confused the least amount, um, um, we are kind of like going through 
So at first way we're going through uh, different uh, SUSE content will be going from n equal 4 to n equal 3, right? And this will involve this pre gauge. Okay? This is something that we'll see through the talk. So we'll take n equal 4 theory and we're able to derive n equal 3 theories by doing this idea of this pre gauge. Okay? This is one way we're going through uh, different SUSE content. Then there's another way which we'll also be using a lot. And it's going from n equal 3 to n equal 2. And this time we're not doing any discrete gauging, but the only the main idea that we will be using is this. Is this is the, is the simple fact that n equal 3 contains three contain a higher content of supercharges than n equal 2. So you can always embed n equal 2 and n equal 3, right? So going from n equal 2, 3 to n equal 2 would be basically asking the question: if there is an n equal 3 theory, how does that look from the n equal 2 perspective? Okay, we'll ask that question. Um, <laughs> and so, so that's, that's one way in which we'll uh, move from 3 and 2. And then there is another, there is yet another time in which we'll uh, see uh, going from, and this time we'll go from n equal 2 to n equal 3. There is also a case like that. And, um, and this is, will be actually an RG flow. Unfortunately, this is a beautiful story by this uh, quite technical, so I'll just like hang on, uh, briefly mention that. But we will, me and uh, Philip and I with, and, uh, and uh, Matteo and Yang Chao show that uh, there is an actual RG flow that can take you from an n equal two theory to an n equal three theory. And the existence of these RG flow is one of what the most solid, I would believe, most solid argument to actually show that n equal three theories exist. Okay. So keep in mind that we're going, you know, going back and forth. Okay, hopefully, hopefully this will kind of like. So once again, this will be actual discrete gauging here, and this we'll use this intuition often. We ask, how does an n equal three theory look from the n equal two perspective? So this arrow is not. We're not really going down to n equal two. We're just like using the you know. We're just asking how does it look from the n equal two perspective, but we're still talking about n equal three theory, and here we're actually going from two to three. Okay. Cool. So let me start, and um, so let me start with point one, and let's try to discuss briefly what's uh, what's the deal with any three theory, and why we haven't really heard about them that much. So first off, just. Uh, just a little kind of summer, summary of, of all this theory. I will uh, pick and choose some features that I want to that, uh, that I'm going to describe of n equal two, n equal three. Just to remind ourselves, and n equal four. I'm not going to be thorough, but just uh, discuss a few things. So I wanted to fo be focusing for uh, you know, some. Some specific reasons only on the vector multiple of these theories, and then I will remind to you the asymmetries, which are an important thing, and then the flavor group, the global symmetry. Okay. So just to get a warm up, uh, refreshing. So, what is the vector multiple of n equal two theory? The vector multiple are used at subscript two. That means the vector multiple of the n equal two. Can be, it's from n equal 1 language, which we're all hopefully familiar about. It's just a vector multiple of n equal 1 and a column multiple of n equal 1. Okay? That means the vector multiple of n equal 1 has the gauge nodes and the a mu, and the current multiple of n equal 1 has a 1 scalar and another fermion. Okay? So the vector multiple of n equal 2 contains two fermions, one complex scalars, and a vector boost. Okay? So one of the major features of n equal 2 is that the vector multiply contains a scalar, which can acquire the bad, and so there exists a Coulomb branch, generically, for n equal 2 uh, gauge theory. Cool? I will get back, we will get back to describe this Coulomb branch a little more in more detail. What about the vector multiple of n equal 3? The vector multiply is similar structure. It's equal to 
a vector multiple of n equal to and a cutter multiple and a hyper multiple of, uh, of uh, n equal to, which, just a brief reminder, in n equal one language, it's just a chiral and anti chiral multiple. Okay? And then the vector multiple of n equal four is the same as vector multiple of n equal two. There's much more to say about that, but that's, that's it for, for that part. What about the R symmetries? The R symmetries in the, in the uh, uh, n equal two case, we have an SU2R and a U1R. The n equal three has an SU3R and another U1R twiddle. And then n equal four has an SU4. Okay, hopefully the first and the third are familiar. Well, we're going to use this in a second to show uh, to derive some properties. Okay. What about global symmetries? For n equal two theories, is whatever you can come up with some some simple E group or whatever you want. And then there is a way to show, and I won't show it, that n equal three and n equal four theories do not emit any flavor symmetry. Okay, so the only global <coughs> symmetry group are the R symmetries. You get, you get, can you believe me on that? Yeah? Yeah, so this is the fact. Okay, questions? So in particular, and that's, that's the kind of spirit of the talk, you can see that if I want to the a vet and an n equal 3 Coulomb branch, right, contains in it an n equal 2 Coulomb branch. Okay? If you give a bet to an n equal 3 vector multiple, it also contains in it and giving a bet to an n equal 2 vector multiple. Maybe I can just point out that so having no flavor symmetry means no mass definition. So the n equal 3 and n equal 4 theories are conformal theories. Conform yeah. Not just. Not just. Not just. Unlike n equals 2. Which can Right. <laughs> That's a good point. So, any point three, any point four, I only conform. You, you have a question? Mm -hmm. Great. So, so in that respect, you, that's what I mean. Like, you know, like there is a way to embed, you know, you can see that, you know, the vector in n equal two Coulomb branch is a subset of an n equal three Coulomb branch, right? And so we will be co focusing on that subset uh, for most of the time. Okay? So let me, uh, continuing this idea of C, how does an n equal three theory looks? How does it look in, from the n equal two perspective? Can you guys read here? If I if I continue, right? Yeah. Um, so how does it? So n equal to four, you can't get make it massive and bring the conformal symmetry by exiting it or something. You break you break n equal four then. Yeah. Yes. Sir. That, what we mean by that is that there are no like any more core preserving. There's still a modulus state to that, so you can it sticking in that sense. So you can kind of think of that as a flow from some n equals four that's three to a, a three stuff. Three and it's u one n equals four. But it's not. It's not. You're not turning on a local operator. Turning on a column. Yes, but you're breaking, you know, conform conform theories, conform symmetry spontaneously. Okay. So first point, right? The the Coulomb branch of n equal three theory, right? It contains again. We want to look. I'm, I'm going to say something about. How does an n equal, let's say we have an n equal three theory, how does that look from the n equal two perspective? Okay. Uh, so the Coulomb branch of n equal three theory, actually from the n equal two perspective, is a Coulomb branch plus a Higgs branch plus a mixed branch. That means that you know once I turn on a band for this guy, I'm also turning on a band for hypermultiple. Right, so that this is called the Higgs branch in the n equal two perspective, right? And then the second thing that is important is that 
you know, let's say we start from an n equal 3 theory. But the n equal 3 theory has an SU3R cross U1 global symmetry, R symmetry. If we choose an embedding of n equal 2, we have to choose an embedding of this group into this. Okay? So doing that kind of makes it's kind of evident that SU3R cross the U1R of the n equal 3 theory from the n equal 2 perspective reduces to an SU2, SU2R, the U1R that we love, and then there is an extra U1 flavor given by the embed given by the embedding of this guy to this guy. Okay? So an n equal 3 theory, even though it does not have global symmetry, uh, flavor symmetry, from the n equal 2 perspective looks like n equal 2, which has a U1 flavor suit. Okay? Questions? So to understand more about... Um, I think I forgot to say this. So I'll make a, a brief remark. Stop in my, so you can think about this. And, uh, and I, I was supposed to announce the fact that there are two uh, spot meetings coming up. There's a, the first one is on April 23rd, Purdue, and then there's another one on May 14th at Ohio State University. Okay? Now I'm going to go back to it. Alright. Great. So, I'm not sure I understand. So, instead of NFL3, you wrote NFL2, and you end up with X3, 1R? X3, 1F. Ah, okay. Is that you want flavor symmetry? Okay. So from the n equal two perspective, there's there's a mass deformation of the n equal three theory that preserves n equal two That's right. Can you remind me? I mean, maybe you said it again, but why is the usual argument why there is no n equal three, or why people didn't consider it? I'll I'll tell you in a second. That is, I mean, I'll sketch. <laughs> there is, I don't think there is there is, there is no argument that says that there are n equal three theory. There's an argument, and I'll tell you in a second, that there are, there are no Lagrangian. There are no Lagrangian in what that's, that's it. Okay? So, exactly, going to, towards like addressing what Martin said. So this is the first sketch, but now we want to go a little deeper into understanding any of three theories. There is more that we can say about it. And so, I want to, it's important that I, you keep in mind, important things about n equal 3 theory, okay? And the reason why I wrote it here is because I'll keep this here for the whole time, so hopefully um, uh, we can get sense of it. So the first point is that the A and C central charges, um, which I'll discuss in a second, are equal. So A equals C. Right? The second is that pure n equal 3 theories are non-Lagrangian. And that's why I think people uh, you know, don't discuss that as much. By pure n equal 3 theory, I mean the fact that if you take an n equal 4 theory, that obviously is also an n equal 3 theory. Right? By pure meaning like a theory that does not have n equal 4. Purely n equal 3. And the three, the third point, which is very much connected to the second point, is that pure n equal 3 theory don't admit exactly marginal operators. So I'm going to describe the next five to ten minutes, bring, you know, describe some arguments to justify those three things. The argument, especially the, the one for this, is a little technical, but it's not necessary. I think it's a neat argument, so that's why I'm presenting it, but it's not necessary to get the gist of it. Those are the three important properties. Isn't it, isn't it 
does have the marginal operator, it must be a fluid and a both force in the Yeah. <coughs> that, that, that's, that's what the, the statement is. Yeah. Well, and I think this is the standard argument why people usually say that an equal three implies an equal four. Because they also assume there is a couple of cards. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. This is, this is the idea. In the Lagrangian setup, you, you, you have it. So, point number one, right? Just, uh, so what is A and C? A and C are two, basically two numbers for, for our purposes. We really don't really have to uh, go very deep in this. I'll just write a formula so that um, it makes a little more sense. There's various ways of defining the A and C central charges in your theory. One of them is um, it's defining them as uh, coefficients of the expectation value of the trace of the energy momentum tensor of your theory on some curved background. This is just one way to define them. We're not actually going to consider any curved background. We are in flat uh, Minkowski the whole time. But it's just to write a formula on the board just to be a little fancier. But really, you know, in our case, those are actually, you know, there is also in 4D, there is an A theorem that tells that the A central charges it decreases along the RG flows, so there is a notion that the A central the value of A central charges measures the number of degrees of freedom. But for our purposes, none of that is actually important. So A and C are just two numbers, two numbers that characterize your theory. Okay. And as I said, the argument actually that showing that the A and C are equal is not very illuminating, it's a little technical, but you can see that n equal 3 and n equal 4, A is equal to C. Right? This is another thing that from n equal 2 perspective, we have to see this relation. Because for n equal 2, A and C are not related. Or they are, they are, you know, there's some bounds, but they are they're not so strict. Either. Okay? Any questions? So point number two is actually, what I mean by that is, is actually the, the, the second point is implied by, by three, that, will, that I will prove in a second. So three implies two. Why? It's because if you have a Lagrangian with a, with a gauge group G, and as you said, like, with also a coupling G or homomorphic gauge coupling tau for supersymmetry, right? In the, in the conformal setup, you, you assume that B of G is equal to zero, right? The beta function of your gauge coupling is va vanishes, right? So that means that the gauge coupling is arbitrary. It does a, it, it's, it's a value that you can, you know, you can set at will, right? And in some sense, there is an, and that implies that there is an, an, an exactly marginal operator whose coefficient is arbitrary, it doesn't, it's not set. Uh, of the form is a kind of just to write something and to make connection with something familiar plus Sufi stuff. An operator like that, it's exactly marginal. Okay, so if you have a Lagrangian theory, the gauge coupling and, and it's conformal, the gauge coupling is it's an, it provides you like, uh, and, and whatever the operator multiplying the gauge coupling is an exactly marginal operator. Therefore, you can turn this argument around that if you show that there aren't any exactly marginal operators, then you cannot possibly think of an equal three theories in the other way. Is it, is it clear? But you could have a beta function with a zero or some value of B. So this operator isn't, isn't exactly marginal. Yeah. Ah, but, but then you will have it again. I think you're saying, what if we have non-conformal right? That's, that's the point, yeah. Only in what three theories are conformal. That's, that's the point. Yeah. 
conformal theory is equivalent to super symmetry on, on, at the level of algebra? I don't, I don't think. Because yeah, I don't think it's correct to say that they're, they're only, um, the only n equals 3 theories are conformal. I mean, presumably, you can write a, an, an n equals 3 derivative, but not n equals 4 derivative operator of some high dimension. Right? Yeah, so I, I think so. It's relevant about that. So you right. can imagine doing some lows in the space of theories. So I think this is more a question yeah, about uh, classifying n equals 3 fixed points. So fixed points, yeah. And you, and None of them can be logarithmic. You're right. So they, they, all, they can't have, I mean, the better way of saying it is they don't have exactly that. You're right. Uh, let, let's stick with, you're right, maybe it's, it's better to stick with SCFTs. So. Cool. So now let's let's try to uh, show an argument to, to, to tell you why. Um, we, you can't have in a pure n equal three SCFTs uh, in my exactly marginal operator. Again, this is a little technical, but it's a I think it's a neat argument. Um, and that, you know, the argument involves basically a little bit of uh, superconformal representation theory. And the idea is that in um, uh, your operators in a conformal theory kind of organize themselves in 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 a multiplet, uh, which are in case of supersymmetry, they are supermultiplet, and operators in the same supermultiplet are the ones that can be obtained with the action of the supercharges on on the conformal primaries. And um, basically, the the requirement of the definition of the definition of the theory tells you that a theory to be defined needs to have a multiplet that contains the energy momentum tensor of that theory. Okay, what that multiplet is depends on the content of supersymmetry. And, okay, so you have an energy momentum tensor, and then you can act upon it with the, your supercharges. And so anything that you can be obtained through the actions of the supercharges from the energy momentum tensor needs to be in the theory. Needs to be, because that whole multiplet needs to be, that needs to be part of the spectrum of the operators in the theory. Okay, I, I want you to, it's a little technical. So in the case of n equal 4, right, this multiplet, it uh, transforms as a 20 of SO4, of SU4, and contains a lot of things. multiplet by action of the of the supercharges contains the energy momentum tensor. Then you can show it that contains by F mu F mu nu, I mean an exactly marginal operator. That's not how you know you don't see the F mu F mu nu, but that's that's the idea. And then also contains the supercurrent that are associated with uh, with the existence of four you know four supercharges Q and Q. Okay? So it all it's all in the same supermultiplet. Right? So this upper multiplet, that's why also you usually say that if you, any n equal 4 theory needs to have an exact <laughs> marginal operator. Right? Because the moment you have a, an energy momentum tensor, you also will have a deformation of your theory of this type. So the n equal 4 is actually the opposite of n equal 3. The n equal 4 implies the existence of this operator. Okay? Then you can ask, how does that multiplet reduce this in n equal 3? Right, this is the same idea as basically taking a, represent, a representation of a larger group and thus decomposing it in an irreducible representation of a subgroup. So this multiplet reduces into these two multiplets. These guys are the SU3 R representations, and those numbers 
are the UNR representation of the Alibaba tree uh, theory. So basically, this multiple just decomposes into the two different multiples. And then what you see is that the energy momentum tensor, it's in this guy. But an exact marginal operator is in this other guy. Fact. Right? Now, the, the point is that, and the, and the three, you know, the, the energy momentum tensor is the same multiple as the supercurrent associated with the n equal 3 supersymmetry. Right? So, as of now, you're not, you haven't proved that anything yet, because you could have this multiple, and then you add this multiple as well to your theory. You can have both. And then you have one multiple providing your energy momentum tensor, and the other multiple providing the exact marginal operator. But this other guy also contains the super, the, the super current preserved associated to the fourth supercharge. Okay? So if you add that to the theory, then you're actually enlarging your n equal 3 to n equal 4. Okay? Now, there is also another piece of the proof that this is, uh, is the only, is the only, uh, is the only multiple that can contain an, an exact imaginal operating unit. So if you add it, then you have to enlarge supersymmetry when you go for If you don't, then you don't have an exact imaginal operating Okay? Now, it was a little technical, so if you didn't understand that, forget about it, and just go back to this table, okay? So the idea is that from our n equal 3 theory, uh, our, the pure n equal 3 theory do not have an exact marginal operator and therefore do not have a Lagrange. Is it cool? In other sense, they have to fix tau or the gauge group, the gauge coupling to some value. I will get back to this point in a second. Okay, any question? I'm a little bit confused by something uh, very elementary. So, um, so I think, uh, uh, so how do I know that I cannot add other operators uh, uh, to make it, uh, um, yeah. Um, I, 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 you know, it's not, it's not, very, it, it's not true. I didn't give you any uh, hints on that. You can show that the unit, using unitary bounds, and in basically super conformal representation theory, you can show that this is the only, the only operator, the only multiple that contains an exact imaginal operator. It, it just you can show it, that there is no other check choice. In principle, you're right. I mean, you could, you could have something else. But basically, the only operator, the only multiple that contains an exact imaginal operator that contains also your fourth. Oh, that, they're all irrelevant. They're all irrelevant. Sure, sure, sure. Is the exact amount, you know, this has to be, you know, dimension four and, uh, you know, it has to be a top. You know, there's also all kind of. Yeah, but, yeah, but your question whether those environment operators, whether some dynamics make them, some non-material dynamics make them, the dimension. Yeah, but, uh, 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 does that. No, this is a classification of all possible, yeah. Operators in the conformal theory. So it's that. What is the possible spectrum of deformation of the theory? And is it one marginal? Yeah. Possible one? And all the so rest this, of this is very powerful because we don't care how we get to the, you know, we don't care about the dynamics. Right. We just show that no matter what you do, you can do a lot of crazy things, you will never be able to hit a fixed point that has an exact marginal number. Just because you can't write it down with you. That's the power of it. And it does not involve any, it's, it's a totally, you know, you so to speak, non perturbative it doesn't. Questions? Okay, so we hopefully, we, I convince you why we had not heard about any about three theory because they're kind of weird, right? In some sense. Um, okay, so now let's uh, kind of switch complete. You know, not completely, but. Sorry, by the way, how do you prove that A equals B point equals B? Huh? Oh, it's a. Uh, it's literally using some clever way of embedding n equal 2 into n equal 3 algebra and using some identity. It's not, I can show you that, I mean, it's not, it's a matter of algebra, it's not. I don't think there is that, I mean. Yeah, that's n equal 3 
I guess you can also see that way. The argument that I've seen it is does not use that, but I'm guessing I guess you can also. We have something you might have to say? No? I was just gonna say I think the, the structure of the three point function is just n equal to two. It's called n equal three. I don't think anybody has actually put that <laughs> argument. But to be able to actually show that so, so explicitly. I, I don't think it would be too hard, but I just think it's quite a bit more work. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh, let's let's now go to point two. And uh, and talk a little bit about Sutherwitten. And now we, you know, as I promised to you, well, before we were going from n equal four to n equal three. Now we're kind of like going to n equal two. We are like kind of going through all of this. And and the reason why I'm I'm going to like give you a very brief interaction introduction on on the Coulomb branch geometries of n equal two theories. And again, uh, we will use that mostly to ask the question. Can we use the structure for, of n equal 2 and the fact that the Coulomb branch of n equal 2 is somewhat embedded in n equal 3 theories to say something about the existence of those theories? Right? Because now, you know, we want to ask the question, do, I don't know what to write it, here, maybe. Do pure n equal 3 exist? <coughs> Right? So the rest of the talk that's that addressing that and part of the rest of the talk is addressing that question. We have seen it how they look like and then whether we can actually construct them. Okay? So let me be very brief and remind you uh, what is the structure of the Coulomb branch of n equal two theories. Okay? So remember what I said in the beginning, at, at n equal two vector multiple contains a scalar and uh, Two fermions, two wild fermions, and amine. Right? Uh, the amine transforms into a joint of the gauge group, so everything transforms into a joint. Otherwise, the machine will break gauge gauge events. And so your your scalar, which could acquire bad. In the back of my mind, I have SUN uh, SUN gauge group, but this obviously generalizes. Phi transforms into a joint of SUN. So how do I describe the valve, the most generic valve of the scalar? I can use old gauge transformation to put it in, in this form. That means put all the, all the values in the diagonal, so everything else is zero, right? So this transforms in the joint of SUN, so it's traceless, so there is an extra condition that the sum of the AI is zero. Okay. When the AIs are generic, SUN, this breaks, this obviously is not invariant under gauge transformation, breaks the gauge group to U1 to the N minus 1. Right? And you, from, from the fact that those values are just complex number, N complex number, in this one relation, the dimension the complex dimension of the Coulomb branch is n minus one. How does that generalize it for any group? <coughs> this just becomes the rank of your gauge group. Okay? Um, because we want to keep things very simple, we're only concentrating on rank one. Okay? For the rest of it. So the dimension of the Coulomb branches that we are going to analyze is one, the simplest thing. Two real dimension, one complex. Any questions? OK? So basically, our Coulomb branch is just a plane and we'll use u to parametrize its coordinate. It's a kind of standard notation. And then there's an extra information on it, um, but next to thing, extra feature, that the Coulomb branch has singularity. So it's not a smooth space, but has punches. 
which if you're familiar with what mean, those are corresponding to points of the Coulomb branch where there are massless states in the theory. If you're not familiar with Savoy, then that doesn't matter. And so you could just uh, think about the a smooth space with punches, with just points, singularity. Right? Why are those singularities important? It's because there is an extra structure in this, in this, in this space, which is the electromagnetic duality group. Okay. So let me explain that in a second. <coughs> so, what is what, so, so the Coulomb branch is described by this value u. Okay. What does u represent in your theory? U represents the scale at which s u two. This is rank one. S u two breaks to u one. Okay. So you expect that the gauge coupling in the low energy depends on where you break SU2 to U1, right? There's an RG flow, and then at some point you break SU2 to U1, then the RG flow does not stop, right? So on this space, there is a function, homomorphic function, which is this guy tau of U. Tau is the holomorphic gauge coupling. It just tells you that the gauge coupling in the IR depends on where you break SU2 to U1. Is it clear? Now there's an extra information in n equal two that tells you that if you get a theory with a coupling tau and a theory with one, minus one over tau, those are the same theory. And tau and tau plus one, they're also the same. Okay? You can combine the action of the two and obtain the fact that this is not just tau, the two transformation, but you can actually take tau and transform it to a tau plus b over c tau plus c plus d. And so long as a d minus b c is equal to 1, these are the same thing. Uh, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> and a, b, c, d are integers. Okay? So there is in, in this, uh, is, this is not just a function, but there is actually an action of S to Z on, on this space, which acts on the tau. And in particular, this is an interesting thing. If you have a singularity, and then a, let, let's say a loop around the singularity. OK? What is the condition? Let's say I start from the point u. So here, there is a value of tau u. I go around the loop. This whole structure tells me that I don't need, I'm not obliged to go back to tau of u for the same value. But I can go back to any tau, any m tau of u, where m belongs to S of u. And the action is just, is just this. Okay? Um, so, you can see that there is a lot of structure right, on, on it. And there, it's very important for what I'm going to say in a minute, the fact that there is an action of S of 2Z on your holomorphic gauge cup. That's very important. OK? Questions? Of any kind? So that's for generic n equal 2 theories. How about conformal theory? That's what the case we're interested in. This picture actually simplifies this dramatically. There's a very simple argument to understand that. Let's say you have, if I, if I, if I ask you, how many singularities can you have on a Coulomb branch that comes from a conformal theory? The answer is one. And actually, the reason is very simple. Let's say you have two, right? Then there is a distance between these two guys, right? This is like some lambda. You know, ma U has some mass dimension. Lambda is some mass, you know, some scale in your theory. And then you get a contradiction. How does the scale arise in a conformal theory? Right? This scale is part of the theory, right? In the moduli space. So this case cannot arise. So if two cannot arise, 
obviously, and anything higher than two cannot rise. We left one possibility, that is one. That's it. That's the only thing that you can have. Right? And in particular, if you go fancy, you can add some uh, um, deficit angle, and this actually looks more like a cone. Where this is u equals zero, this is u equals zero. Okay? Questions? So the, the gist of it, I know, I'm again, I'm, I'm trying to stress that the details are not essential. The gist of it is that this whole structure, it's really constraining for the rank one case. We have just left to a, 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 only a single cone. And then using the fact that there is this extra SO to Z action, and uh, there is a lot of technicality in the fact that things have to be kind of like globally, be holomorphic and, and everything uh, beautifully patched together. You can conclude that there are only seven geometries that I'm going to write here that are allowed. So they allow cool and branch geometries This is uh, Kodaira classification. Is it arises often in the literature in different contexts. So the allowed column brand geometries are Which are given by prior, it's not relevant again at all, but just to be I zero, I zero star, four star, three star, two star, four, three, two. <coughs> Fact. Okay. So the the Coulomb branch dimension is one for this guy, the mass dimension, the scaling dimension of the Coulomb branch, of the operator gets of f. It's two, three, four, six, and then three half, four third, six fifth. It was a little weirder. That's why I put it in the bottom. And then the important thing is. From the geometry, from the geometry, from the perspective of geometry, you can ask what are the values of tau which are compatible with the SL to Z action? Right? If you find that the, the geometry is compatible for any tau, that's an evidence that that geometry contains an, an exactly marginal operator. That's a, 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 an evidence that the beta function this is associated with the Lagrangian theory. Because the tau can be just set at will. The beta function of the of the gauge coupling vanishes. And you find that for this guy, this is any value. Okay? For this guy is any value. And then you find that for all the other ones, tau is fixed. You can only up get some some particular value. kind of like, hopefully, um, we can see why this is powerful, right? So what I said, what I said is that this is an analysis that basically only, con only involves n equal to um, kind of information, right? But as I said, n equal 3 gate Coulomb branches are also n equal 2. So this applies also for n equal 3 theory, right? But from n equal 2 perspective, we see that, for instance, the Coulomb branch, the, the scale dimension of the Coulomb branch of the n equal 3 theories cannot be neither one or two. Because those geometry have this exactly marginal operator. They're just from the n equal two perspective. So therefore, also from the n equal three perspective. So we have to kind of 
lie, you know, if, if they exist, have to be one of these exotic cases. Is it? Is it? <coughs> The logic, the logic is that um, you have a particular monodromy. You have to impose there's a particular monodromy around the singularity, so a particular element of SL2Z, and it has to be particular. In sound, in what sense particular? Because we don't know theory yet, right? No, but no matter what, there has to be around the singularity. There has to be a particular a, a, a monodromy that is an element I of. I think you have a whole part of the story. In okay. addition to the monodromy, there's actually a a geometry. Oh, yeah. it, it's a, you know, whatever, the special Taylor geometry. And you keep, so you have to give the rules of, chip of what that is and how that ties the monogamy to the geometry. And you find these are the only ones where you have finite distance to that particular thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not hard. Yeah, you have just a. There is no, I mean, there's no physics here, I mean, in some sense. Like, the physics is that there's an asset to Z. Action, but it's just the only consistent challenges that you can find. I mean, why, the n the n equal two uh, the n equal three conformal point is also an n equal two conformal point, right? So all the all the constraints have, coming from the n equal two. But it doesn't have to be a part of the continuous moduli space of some family of n equal two fields. No, no, no. That, you're using moduli space in a different sense. That, We're not. That's not not in terms of uh, connected by an exactly marginal operator. But the n equals three theory has a moduli space, the conformal theory has a moduli space of vacuum. The n equals three theory is uh, contains the an n equals two theory. And so this moduli space of vacuum is just a subspace. In yeah, the subspace of it. So in, in some sense, if we actually were, ac uh, were able to access all the n equals three conformal uh, information, it will be a more restricted case. But there's additional conditions, right? Maybe, maybe we can, there's a lot to cover, so uh, I'll, I'll, we can discuss that later. Uh, okay, so really briefly, so forget about this last table, but let me tell you that these two theories, these two theories, okay, those are the n equal 4 theory. Uh, I miss here, <laughs> Philip might disagree, I know, but, uh, I'm simplifying a little bit the picture, but those are the ones that, give n equal 4 theory, in particular, the, the one, this one with uh, scale dimension 1 is the U1 uh, and gauge theory, n equal 4. And this guy is the SU2 and the n equal 4. And um, all the others could be potential n equal 3. Okay? I think, I think we need to, we need to, I think we just, uh, I think there's a misunderstanding, because I haven't told you, there's a misunderstanding what goes into this classification. 
it's, it's more, it's a, there's more. It's, on my side, there's no understanding here. No, no, exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, maybe, maybe we can discuss that later. I mean, it's just that, it's a. Hold on, I just want to try to understand. I'm confused by your word. So, there is a, a this tau is just the, the low energy effective value of the coupling in the low energy U1 theory on the, on the fluid on there. Right? This Coulomb branch of Margaret exists in an N equals 3 theory just as well. And, yeah, and, and, and you want as an N equals 2 theory. And, but and we can classify these values. Of course, the meaning of the specific values here only have meaning up to an S S overall, D, overall SLTD transformation. Right? The, the, question, the question also is that the tau, in for instance, a lot, you are use, you're assuming scaling bands. So around the curve that goes around the single edge, the tau should be in there. I mean, th there's more structure to it. Like, yeah. Okay, I probably need to ask one more question. Because the basic I don't understand what are the ingredients behind the table. Right. So this is, uh, this table is not, we, to get this table, you need to assume that the tau n equals 2 and something else, right? Conformal. Yeah. There's equals a skin invariant. N equals 2, conformal invariant. Right. And the, the, and the, the, existence the artificial of cool. restriction that we're just looking at the one dimensional cool on there, mm -hmm. right that we're, we're, for simplicity, we're just focusing on the <laughs> simplest yeah. one point. Here. And then, this is effectively, you know you, you're looking for scale invariant, slightly more uh, special Taylor geometries, which have a, um, a polymorphic C star action, that's the generalization of scale invariant. And this is the classification of that, the answer to that geometry. There's no. Well, okay, so what I'm is that you cannot have, why you cannot have lattices of some discrete values of tau? Why you have one specific values of tau which are lattices? Because, the, I mean, in the conjugacy classes of s 2 z is very simple in, in that case. So they're important. So just like, just like. I thought you can, in whatever group you want to have, you can start that is true. Uh, okay, so <laughs> you're right. So the specific but then there are a, a then there are an infinite number of equivalent images of any of those values of tau throughout the S of Z. Which are just the just the different choice of electric magnetic reality. Yeah, that's it. But why in uh in why only, so there is this invariant region, right, where you know, we can start with any point of tau plane and bring the point to that region. Sure. So the what, domain. fundamental domain, so why in a fundamental domain only these points are allowed? That's what I'm not sure. Why, why it's not possible to start with any other point and not start acting with the symmetry group and the uh, nearest other factors? At least at the corner of the domain. Yeah, those are the corner of the usual SLTD fundamental. I'm, I'm sure I'm missing uh, some rather simple technical point yeah, here. Yeah, maybe I should ask you. Yeah. yeah, we should. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll discuss that. Okay. So anyway, we have that. Uh, so the idea from the equal 2 perspective, uh, we have to go, those are the potential candidates. And it's important to remember that this time, the equal 14, right? By n equal four theory, I mean those are those are how the n the, the, the n equal two component of the Coulomb branch of the n equal four theory looks like. Okay. Okay. So. So can you say something about the left over the orbit of those? What's that? What do you say? The left over symmetry. Oh yeah. So by the left over symmetries, it's basically asking what is the subgroup of S two Z. Yeah. No, I'm asking for the um for the other cases. Oh okay. Sure. So in these two cases, because tau is, a, is, is arbitrary, the whole s 2 z is a symmetry of the problem. s 2 z And here you see that there's a z, z uh, this is four stars. So there's a z6, there's a z4, there's a z6. No, no, z3 is the four stars. Z3, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, and here is a Z, Z6, no? No, no, Z3, 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 Z3,
which we're going to be using in a second to understand. Okay, so I'll be uh, kind of uh, going quickly through this. So just to state that uh, Hironi and Tachikawa In, uh, in a paper which came out very recently, have uh, kind of claimed that they have an F theory construction for pure n equal three theory with delta u equal three and four. Okay. Uh, so that would be the, the first two new n equal three tiers that are pure that are not going to n equal four. So I, I think you should say I mean, their, their paper is just a refinement of the earlier proposal. Of the other paper. Garcia, yeah. X to Bali, and Regalado. Yeah, Garcia and uh, Regalado. In the center. Which was the initial reference I gave you. So what can we say about it, right? So what can we say using uh, this structure? Um, we, in, uh, in this other paper, which uh, came out recently, using this and kind of a much more complicated technique that we have developed uh, in, this, in this series of other papers, with Matteo, also Yang Chao, we showed that there exists, there exists an n equal 2 theory, which was previously constructed, with flavor group SU4 with this weird uh, discrete extra factor in the flavor group, and a delta u equal to 6. So there exists this theory, and we showed by using our n equal 2 seven written technique that this theory flows we can actually even identify the flow to, to this thing. So that we call it four star and equal three. Okay? Again, there will be more to say, but what do we mean by that is that again, we looked this theory from the n equal two perspective as all the checks that that as A equal to C, as the extra U1 flavor group, and, 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 all, and so forth. So in, in my opinion, this is a very strong statement, because again, the, the theory we started from, it, it's physical, it's existed, it, it's been constructed, and we identify the flow, and we get that, right? So I was talking to Leonardo last week, Leonardo Rastelli, and we, I was claiming that this is very strong. So that I think there's a strong claim to say that this, this theory exists. Um, then for for this theory, the three star n equal three, we also have an argument by this last side. Okay. Though you know we I have the thing, I don't think we understand uh, the F theory argument well enough to make any statement about that. But we you know believing I don't know this also should exist. So the, 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 the statement is definitely that do pure n equal 3 uh, theory exist? Yes, for sure. That's, that's definitely, oh, for sure, maybe strong, but very likely. Okay? So we do the flow. So how do you know that the different fixed point is not n equal to 4 or, or just n equal to 4? So n equal to 4, you know that. Because as, as I told you in the beginning, n equal 4 theory needs to have an exact marginal operator. And those theory do not have. But how do you know whether that's some? Um, uh, yeah, you say the English force theory. What? What? Yeah, the English force theory is unique. So if you float it, it's not. Yeah. So what could happen is that this theory is actually n equal two. It looks like it has all the all the features for n equal three, but there is no there's no n equal three like that. Because we're using n equal two techniques. That that that's possible. But. Uh, it's possible. That's definitely, we can't exclude that. Um, 
On your side, there's really a lot of things that match on your side. But then things like find A equal C, that Yeah, so completely, yeah, completely, yeah. Uh, you know, it really smells like it's an equal C. Maybe not, but. Okay. So then I want to, maybe I'm, I'm still on top, maybe, I don't know. Still time to finish and get to the table that, you know, Martin and I just haven't seen, but it's a glorious table that is behind. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so, um, so let me go back, go, go down now to this idea of discrete gauging. And uh, rather than like, you know, go into any kind of fancy way to, to describe that, I'll just state it, write it down what we mean by discrete gauging. So a discrete gauging, it projects out local operator <coughs> which are not invariant. under the Zn that you have discretely gauged. So we have discretely gauged Zn. And so that what that does is projecting on this local operator. But it does not change the correlation function. And also A and C are unchanged. So you start with some values of A and C and you obtain the same A and C. Of the local operator, which remain in theory. Okay? So it's not that you add any, you know, extra interactions or anything like that. And then it would be a very interesting conversation, which I don't know if we can have it, whether or not the, uh, the, you start with a theory, you discreetly gauge it, a discrete uh, a ZN of some sort, whether or not you call the theory that you obtain a different theory or the same theory. In some sense, it is the same theory because you're not really changing the dynamics. In any sense, it's a different theory because it looks quite different. And hopefully I'll have the time to tell you that it seems to be we found that the value looked very different. Because you're basically just, you know, anything that is not invariant to this Zn, you're kind of like projecting it out from your theory. It's not allowed anymore. You'll have to allow any new twisted states or new loose moves or anything? Like yeah, there, there is extra, there is extra surface yeah. Yeah. Those are only concerning local. Mm -hmm. So let me jump right into the, into the core of that. Um, so we want to use discrete gauging to go from n equal 4 to n equal 3. Okay? Remember that by n equal 4, at least in the rank 1 case, we, we, we have this i0 and i0 star geometry, which are associated with these two SP1 and SP2 theory. And we want to do a discrete gauging. Right? And go to any button. Right? So what do we need to do? Okay, what is Zn? Is that the part of the gauge group? No, Zn. No, no, no. Zn. Zn is an external. Is a, a global symmetry that the theory has that you gauge. So do you start with n equal four theory which has an extra Zn? So for uh, I will tell you in a sec. Uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll yeah. Give me a sec. I will respond to you in five minutes. Maybe less. Okay. So how you know I'm. Um, what does this Zn need? What does that Zn need, right? To do the job. So, and again, this is this is the this very it really this is the paper by Garcia Severia and Regalado. They are the ones really introducing this idea, um, which was generalized by Offer and uh, Eugene. So we have done <laughs> like a lot of discussions about all these characteristics, right? That needs to be kind of implemented by this discrete gauge. So one thing we need to do is to fix that. Right? We said we cannot, you know, the, the n equal 4 theory is an exact marginal operator. 
this needs to be fixed at some value. Right? Also, from an n equals 3 perspective, we need to change the scaling dimension of the Coulomb branch. Because again, if we start with 1 and 2, those geometries cannot be interpreted as such. Then the Zn should also act on the supercharges, because only three of the four supercharges should be invariant. Okay? And then four, which is not a condition, we should preserve A equal, a equal C. This is automatically given, right? Because we start from a theory that has A equal C, the discrete gauge and doesn't do shit to A and C, and so this we end with A equal C. Okay? But the first three cases is a, a non-trivial stuff, and that's and that's how we build the ZN to try to be to 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 do the job. And so So what does that look? So let me, you know, this is a sloppy notation, but it's uh, hopefully uh, intuitive. So the Zn is actually a composition, that is a Zn total, that is a composition of a part which lies in the R symmetry, and a part that lies into this, what I call the leftover symmetry, right? The remaining part, the remaining action of S of two. Why is it the case, right? The R symmetry, this guy, uh, acts on the Coulomb branch. Coulomb branch. Your U trans has a U and R charge, right? So it basically forces you to go from U, your initial U, to some U twiddle, which is a power to some n, right? Let's say U becomes the E to the I, 2 pi I, over n factor from the Zn, then you twiddle to find that way that's invented. So this is going to be your new operator. Everything else is projected out. Okay? So this guy instead acts on top, right? That's what we claim. So for instance, you start with the theory that can allow any tau, and then if you pick up a particular subgroup of SF2Z, then you only left with a non value tau that are invariant under that particular uh, generator. So it fixes it. Okay? So, um, in particular, you, you can ask, you can ask, what are the subgroup, discrete subgroup? That I can uh, that I can use in SF2Z to play around, and, and granted that basically if you act with a Zn, you basically multiply your scaling dimension by a factor of n. So you cannot act with a Z10 or Z20 because you have to end with none of these values. Mm -hmm. But also, so the discrete group of SF2Z is a Z2 which is generated by minus the identity. There is a Z3 that is generated by S and T. These are just the two generators of S to Z. There's a Z4 that is generated by S. And a Z6 generated by minus S T. Okay? So this guy doesn't fix tau at all. And doesn't fix. I'll show you. Fixed out. This guy fixed the star to e to the 2 pi i over 3. This is fixed to i. And this is fixed to again 2 pi i. Okay? Let me show you an example why does this not fix out. So the which have the, yeah. in, in the interior of the, 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 interior. the, on the on, well, the interior of the not on the not on the boundary of the upper half. So tau, you know, if you have a, you know, let's say the identity, the identity m is just 
minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. Right? Tau goes to A tau plus B, C tau plus D. Right? If you put A minus 1, D minus 1, tau goes into tau. So that lives in a minute, and then you play around, and this thing's actually known as a body. Okay, so in, in, the, in that paper, you know, in December, in that paper in December, so that, there's, as you see, that is, this ZN is very kind of uh, complex, right? And I, it's, uh, it, that was the idea to combine the R symmetry and the SL2Z. I have not showed you that this does the job for the U, this fixes this style, and also you can, it's a little more technical to show that if you choose this properly, if the N is the same on both sides, you definitely preserve only three of the four superchargers. That's a, it's no trivial check to do, the, to do that, but I don't have the time to, to show it. So in the paper in, in December, whatever it was, the, the, the rest of it. Sorry, with the fact that Z uh, adds some tau, should I understand it in the following way? Uh, locally near this fixed point, tau or delta tau multiplies a particular marginal upper, right? Which is, I guess, in a square. Yeah. So the fact that your ZM acts on tau, does it mean that you are at the unit square discharge under the ZM? Yeah. So, so it's projected out. It's projected out. It is, it is projected out. Right, it's going to be Yeah. And you obtain a theory without a definite amount. Okay. So in, in, the, in, the, in this paper, they basically constructed this. So we're going to I told you that there were two new, pure and anybody, but you can construct many more. Mm -hmm. Now there is a question: Do we call the one that obtained that obtained by the steel gauge new equal new n equal three, or whatever, or daughters of n equal four, whatever? That's a different discussion. But we can uh, we we can show that there are more uh, of those. And so in the in, in this in this um, in this paper, they only apply. Basically, this construction on the I zero, and, and so they got I zero mod up by uh, Z three. This basically tells you that the U goes into U Q, and so implies that B of U twiddle, which is U, U twiddle equal to U Q, is equal to three, and the tau goes to the E two by I over three, right? So this will look like a four star anybody, another one. Right? Then I zero mod Z four and I zero mod Z six will give you three stars and two stars. Okay? Those are very trivial because remember that we are starting with a n equal two theory with U one gauge group, but uh, which is a free theory, right? Because it has a one hypermultiplier which transforms the, the adjoint of the U one, which is nothing, because that's not it's not charged. Okay? So those are trivial. I mean, they are equal three, but they're trivial. And so, um, in what sense does the engine engage symmetry? Oh, <laughs> we're, we're just calling it. We're just, we're just, just using it. Yeah, we're just. We're taking a global. We, we identify it as a global symmetry, and we say that's stable. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there is a. Let's, uh, I I think I think uh, yeah well yeah we'll talk in a second but we're just using as a you know kind of selecting the operator that I love. Okay, there's no no showing which. So in our paper, then we kind of try to generalize and think about what about any for four SU two, right? Can we do the same for those theories that aren't those are not a three? I mean again maybe. Um, so, uh, again, uh, there's no, no way to uh, actually describe this in, in detail. But we notice that this theory, the SU2 on the Coulomb branch, for a particular value of tau, the singularities are, you know, there's three singularities, and they are at the vertices of the equilateral triangle. This is the mass of yeah, the mass. Yeah, um, you, yeah. This is a master form theory of the n equal four. That's why the the signal is split. But anyway, the sub, the, the, the has this very particular feature on the Coulomb branch, and um, and so there is a Z three action. 
which would be the, the R symmetry part of the zeta dot. That seems to be there. And then for instead tau equal to i, this the same three singularity line up in this way. This is u equal zero, and this is like u equal u twiddle, and u equal to minus u twiddle. And so that seems to be a, you know this shitty drawing, but like there's a z2. That just flips this two and doesn't have to be easy. Okay? So, I mean, there is, it's much more subtle than this. I wish we could have time to discuss those things because this observation might actually have a shed light into uh, some deeper results of the S duality group of the Nicole Core theory. But this, if this Z3 would be allowed, again, you start from Nicole 4, which has delta equal 2, you get Z3, you get a 2 star, you get a delta equal 6. So this would be another Z3, uh, 3 star, 2 star, and equal 3. And this would be dimension Coulomb branches 2 times 2, because this is a Z2, would be a 3 star. OK? Now, I'm almost there, so I maybe I can take another five, uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes out of 50, for sure. Yeah? That's I mean, I, we, okay. Okay. and supposedly I make to, I mean, we make to move. So do you see all this at the level of the geometry? But I mean, I, you would say that if you have the two and you do this deviation, it would Oh, yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what I'm going to say now. No. Yeah, uh, okay. right, exactly. Uh, I mean, that's exactly the point, right? The point is that, um, so, this is so far has been the using the screw gauging to construct new n equal three theory, right? But as you just said, there is a much deeper thing, you know, or much more much richer picture of how do we construct other n equal two theories, right? Because the, the point is that if you start with an n equal four, you can project out one supercharge and, and obtain an n equal three theory. If you start from an n equal two theory, there is no way through the screw gauging to, you know, create an excess supercharge. But what you can do, you can start with an n equal two theory. And then obtain another n equal two theories and doing discrete gauging of this. Does it make sense for that? So that's exactly what I'm going to describe right now. So the, the last part, it's the end, which is n equal two theories with disconnected gauge group. Gauge group. Okay? So, um, what is the major difference? The major difference is that those theories now have flavor group. N equal three and N equal four theories do not have flavor group, but N equal two theories do have even quite large flavor groups. We have N equal two theories that have E8 flavor group, even in the Reinhardt case. Okay? So in order to, to generalize, to actually answer Matten's question and understand how to do that, that game for genetic uh, non-Lagrangian N equal two theories, we should describe. We should answer the first this question: How does uh, the discrete gauging by DG is discrete gauging act on Almare? By Almare means on the flavor group. So how does that uh, act? Let me you know tell you uh, one example. So let's keep in mind one example. So consider a U1 n equal two theories with n hypermultiplet, one with charge plus one and the other one with charge minus one. Right? This, you have n copies of that, this has a UN flavor group, and uh, the n plus one charges transforms under the fundamental, and the n minus one charges transforms under the fundamental of the, of the flavor group. Right? So, something that I haven't told you that, that it was shown in the paper, in, the, in, the, in this paper, was they actually be a little more explicit than I, than I have been. And they kind of showed how the Z2 that I, uh, how the Z2 total, so in the case n equal 2, acts on, on the BPS states of your theory. So they, they didn't just like stay at the level of the Coulomb branch operator, 
and the tau, but it also showed how this z the, the this discrete group acts actually on the states, on your uh, on your matter content. And in particular, they show that the z2 total takes flips, just take it for granted, flips the sign of electric and magnetic charges of the VPS state. Okay? So now, if you look inspired by this, what would that be the action on? I mean, this creates just electric, electrically charged uh, states. So basically, the Z2, this particular Z2, in the case that is matter, switches, you know, brings Q plus into Q minus and Q minus into Q plus. Right? Just flipping the charges, just switches these two guys. Right? Um, now you can, in other words, basically it brings the fundamental representation into the anti-fundamental and vice versa. So, of the flavor group, of the UN flavor group. Which, this can be, um, so this, in other words, can be saying that the fundamental of the flavor group goes into the anti-fundamental and the anti-fundamental into the fundamental, for the UN case. And then you can trust me that this is exactly the action. Uh, this is exactly the action of the Z two outer automorphism of the UN. Okay. So we don't. I don't think. I don't think at least. Uh, I don't think we have the an explicit way in which this this uh, this um, symmetry acts for. Other ends, we only have for Z2, but we can lift up this observation that we made in a UI simple little simple theory to say, oh, in the case of the matter, so remember that our Zn had two factors, right? Had a Zn, Zn total, had the Zn R symmetry. Compose the EN SF to Z. And then our guess, our conjecture, is that if there is matter as so a flavor group, there's an extra you know, there's an extra factor, which is the ZN of the outer automorphism outer, outer of the flavor group. Okay? So basically you start with a theory. You know, I told you the rules for the Kuhler branch parameter. I told you the rules for the tau. You have to see what are the, the and the, and then I the extra rule is that the if you start with a flavor group F at the end of it and you you know discreetly gauge by this particular Z N, you go to F mod whatever outer automorphism of the flavor group. Is it cool? It doesn't have to be that all the ends sure, sure. on the right hand side have to be just that yep. whatever you combine them together such that the total group is a Z end. Yeah. <coughs> and if you choose different Z ends, you have possibly different amount of supersymmetry. So, sure. And so then, you know, that's concluding. This is the glorious table that I've drew, uh, drawn before. And, uh, and so that's exactly what this table does. Right, for, for, this is basically taking taking what you just said and just carefully doing for any any theory, right? So I'll tell you just how to read this table. Uh, but I lied to you in some sense, in the sense that the, th the thing that I haven't told you is that there is multiple theories, even though the geometries are only that many, there is multiple theories which have the same Coulomb branch, right? So the fact that it's a one four star doesn't mean that there's only one four star theory. There's many, right? And in fact, in the, in the first column, I know that's very hard to read. There's a more readable table. Oh, can I move it? Oh, this So in the first column, 
that is the you know the way you read it. The two stars there is got that's the Kurumba geometry, and this guy is the is the flavor group of the theory, right? So in the first column, I hold the parent theory, so to speak, the one that I'm not disputing against. In the second column, you obtain you know for instance we can discrete gauge the four star E6 four by Z2 four star is a dimension 3 Coulomb branch so you obtain a dimension 6 Coulomb branch is a two star and then the F4 is actually obtained by modding out E6 by the outer automorphism that is Z2 and so forth and so you can play around and you obtain all this stuff this thing. as I said discrete gauge does not change the central charges so our F3 theory on the same line has the same central mm -hmm. charges that are equal to the initial theory <coughs> And furthermore, I don't know if you can read it, I, there's multiple different theories. Any theory that has a 3, it's a putative n equal 3 theory. Any theory that has a 4 is an n equal 4 theory. And so then you can play and just stay at this table for as long as you want. And Sorry, what is, what is the 3 most bright columns? This is 24A? Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a normalization that we have been using for the central charges. I have I thought you said that for n equal 3, yeah. 3 a is equal to in fact, In fact, you can see that the n equal 3 theory, they're all equal. Those are, those are the, this is the, the generalization to all n equal 2. This is the, the table that includes all the n equal 2 <laughs> discrete the gauge theory. Because, because 24a and 12c, so now when a is a, Yeah, it's 2a is 1c. That I understand, but let's say the very first line. Now, this is an n equal 2 theory. It's an n equal 2 theory. All right. So in one sense, uh, I, to I told you in the beginning, for instance, I told you in the beginning that remember that n equal 3 theory have no flavor group, right? Zero flavor group. This is looking at n equal 3 theory from the perspective of n equal 2. So in this table, any n equal 2 theory, n equal 3 theory, should appear with a U1 flavor group. You see? All the theories that have a U1 flavor group have, have a 3 theory. So this in particular has an E8 flavor group. So this is definitely an N equal 2. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. That's all for today.